Deputy Masters, uh, we'll talk about a very important topic, which is soul plan, pre-birth planning, which is uh, kind of, you know, it applies to everyone for sure. Uh, it may be of interest to everyone, I'm sure, because it will clarify certain things. It has potential to make our life happy and of course, blissful. If we understand certain things that what happens, how it happens, uh, it will help you in understanding and appreciating and fine tuning your day-to-day -day action, reactions, emotions, all those things. Now, since it's a heavy topic, lots of terms and lots of subtopics attached to this topic. So we will go slowly and one by one. We will recap every session so that when you're listening to something after a week, you can connect the dot. So we are in no rush. We'll keep going over certain things in a way that it helps you. That's the whole intention, not just to listen and forget, but how it can help. So Soul Plan, and there are two books uh, from the author Robert Joss and uh, Soul Plan and the Soul Skip. So we are more talking about the Soul Skip content and uh, I will be adding in it the quantum physics based topics we have already gone through so that it will connect the dots. Based on my own experience, I'll be sharing some of those things and I'll be requesting you all to share your experience time to time so that you know we can make it more interesting and more meaningful for everybody to join and share and learn. You learn more when you're sharing and you know discussing things than just when you're listening. So the first thing is let's talk about healing before we even come to soul plan, what is soul plan and things like that. So what is the goal and what is the reward when we say, okay, we are looking for healing? So it is not something that you want for a day, for a week. You want something forever for your life. That means the peace, the, uh, the healing, the divine you know, blissfulness that you are looking for. We do for, like we say, permanent feature, not like temporary that... Today I feel good and tomorrow it goes back to normal. So we want those moments to stay there. We want that when we really think, we will feel that every day we are you know, excited, enthusiastic, we are joyful. It's not that you get up and say, oh my God, now I have to go to work or college, university, whatever the day is like. It should be excitement that yes, another day. When you look back, you will feel, man, I can't even think, you know, when last time I was feeling a little low, a little depressed, a little, you know, anxious, anxiety and all those things. It's gone. It's past. That's true healing when you can't even think when was the last time you were not happy, sad, depressed. That means it has become way of your life and you are always excited, happy, divine. So what you're doing in a way is you're increasing your energy, you know, the human energy field. You're increasing your frequency. And if you recall our discussion during, uh, we talked about quantum physics and also during chakra, every energy center has a different frequency, different energy. And as you go from lower to higher, you see the energy increases. We also talked about elevated emotions how they are compared to low level emotions. So low level means shame, guilt, pain, trauma, and all those things compared to elevated emotions, which are true love, feeling of oneness, feeling of abundance. All those have much higher energy. So by healing, we means we are increasing the frequency of our body so that now it is easier for the soul to communicate to us. Now you may feel that, hey, how my soul gonna communicate with me? Because when you are stuck with the low level energies, shame, guilt, pain, and all that, you are in a depressive mode. 
you are in a kind of hiding mode, hiding from everyone, including yourself, because you are sad, you are depressed, you are kind of hurt. And that is why there is a wall between you and your soul. The more you work on it, meditation, pranayam, that wall becomes thinner and thinner. And now you are spending time in meditation means you have access to your own soul. You have access to what your heart is telling you, things like those. And that's true healing. Now, if that is healing, what's suffering? Unfortunately, if you see the history of humanity, mostly we learn through suffering. That means something wrong happens, then we try to fix our thing. You may have heard people say, the only thing we have learned from history is that we have not learned anything. That means we see someone else going through some pain, some suffering, like typical example, say you you know you're driving on a road, you see the other guy going in a kind of pothole, and you see the people suffering in throughout different ways. Is it not wise that we correct our path, we correct ourselves rather than we go in the same pothole, the same situation, and then say, "Oh my God, there is something like this happening. I should make some." changes, whether it's in my path, in my thinking, in my lifestyle, whatever that may be. It's not easy because that's a human nature, but that's the whole intention. How can you minimize your repeated suffering? You may go through it once, let's identify, let's fix it right there rather than going over and over. Why is it? Because profound healing will take place when you have negative emotions, but you are not acting on it. So someone says something, yeah, for a moment you feel bad, but now you are not full of anger. You are not in a reactive mode that, okay, he said this, I will say this. If he do this, I will do that. When you do not do all those, because of the meditation, because of your pranayama, yoga, living in the moment, whichever way you take it, all these things makes you stronger. Like we said, you want to increase your energy so that you are more stable, more calm, more peaceful. Now you are not reacting. Yes, things, life will throw stuff at you, but you are becoming, becoming more powerful in controlling your reaction. You are not just knee-jerk reaction and okay, he said this, I do this. No. And that is where the healing takes place. That means you are able to take those emotions, those situations much better. So what's our aim? One fundamental thing if you see is, yes, we talked about increasing the energy, but one fundamental thing is you want to improve, increase, enhance your self-love. You can say self-esteem, self-confidence, whichever way we take it. Because one of the fundamental thing is we put ourselves down. We feel low. Oh, I cannot do this. I'm not good in that. All those kind of feelings which come from mostly low-level emotions, shame, guilt, pain, trauma, and, and all those things which makes us look down at ourselves. So you are trying to achieve emotional independence. The more you love yourself, the more you accept yourself the way you are, the way you look, the way your physique is, the way your thought process, the way your lifestyle, whatever, you will become more and more emotionally independent. You will start considering that everything is in your hand. You are responsible for your well-being, no one else. You will stop blaming others for your misery. You will stop saying, oh, because of this, that happened, because of my boss, because of my friend, because of X, Y, Z. You will stop blaming others for the challenges in your life. And you will take control in your own hand that, yes, I can fix, I can improve my life, my situation, my challenges. That is emotional independence. That's our aim. Because everybody says, yes, 
have patience, live in the moment and all those kind of things. How do you achieve? You have to be emotionally independent. Then you are in full control. Otherwise, somebody, you know, poke you this way and you go the other way and now you are dancing. To achieve emotionally independent stage, that kind of mental and physical state, one thing which is very critical is to understand, accept, and work on our false beliefs. False beliefs are the reason we are trying to learn something, overcome something, whatever it is. Now, false belief means we talked about low level energies, you know, we blame ourselves. We, we look at, look down at us and see that I cannot do this, I'm not good in that. Those are all false beliefs. Why? Because we all have the same part of the universe, a bit of universe. We say, I am Brahmasmi. We all are part of the same universe. We are all having the same superpowers. We just don't know about it. We have not acknowledged, realized, identified. And so we feel we are powerless. I'm not good in communicating. I'm not good in sports, education, my work, my presentation, all kinds of things we believe. So what happens? You stay your whole day, week, and life in a shameful, painful, trauma, all those kind of emotions, rather than blissful, enjoying, love, excitement, and all that. Soul knows it, that you are full of powers. It's just your physical body, your physical self does not identify or realize that. And that is what we are trying to do. We want to be brave, we want to be capable, strong enough that we can make our life free of all those negative emotions. We can honestly and boldly say, okay, yes, identify this is my pre-birth planning. This is what I'm here to learn and learn and move on because learning means healing. That's the point of learning. And we'll see the detail what exactly it means. There is a reason you pick those topics to work on to heal something the fundamental underlying factors. But false belief is something which is holding you, making you look down at yourself. To do this, heart is a very big supporter for you because mostly we think from our brain, analyze, analytical thing, right? One plus one is two. Your heart may say one plus one is four. It's not logic. But if that's what your heart is telling you, we should see that when we should be listening more to the heart than to the brain. You know, sometimes you say, oh, I have a gut feeling. Yes, it's not heart, it is your intestine, the gut area. Idea is same, both work the same way. That logically you may not be able to explain, but you know this thing doesn't feel right. Sometimes you have to make a choice, go here or there, do this or that this person, that person. And you know, you're, you just say, hey, my gut feeling says, let's go with this option. I cannot explain you logically, but that's what I feel. That's your heart, your gut, go with that. That means you have a connection with your body, with your soul, go with that. Don't always go for your brain. And there's something called Akashic Record. What is Akashic Record? You know, you go to the library and you can get, uh, you know, anything you want to know, the history or detail of past events. You can uh, get a catalog, something, and you can, you know, research or find out. You want to know about any particular organization that, hey, what's the history of this organization? You Google it and it will tell you everything this organization was, you know, it started in such and such year, this person, and they did this, 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 this. You want to know about someone, some person, you can, you know, figure it out many different ways and find out details of the person. Whether the person is alive or dead, that means even historic information, 
you have books, you have records, the king, the civilization, and all kinds of things. This Akashic record, what we are talking about, is pertaining to all the souls. Whether those souls are in incarnation forms on earth or in the non-physical world, because not every soul is in the human form all the time. You know, they keep rotating. That means when the person goes to the spiritual world, uh, spirit, uh, you know, form. Uh, so you leave the earth, we say, oh, the person passed away, but it's not that you pass away and next moment you take rebirth. No, there is a big gap between the two. Why? Because you have to do the analysis. What have you learned in this life? What you wanted? What do you want to learn in the next incarnation? And that is pre-birth planning. So it's not a question that you can do it in you know one second and next moment you are back again on earth. No, it doesn't happen that way. And that's Akashic record about all the souls, about all the pre-birth planning, the detail why this thing was picked by this soul to learn this. What was the plan that from whom you're going to learn? Sometimes you feel that, oh, my friend, my family, my kids, my spouse, parents, neighbors. No, nothing is by accident. It is all planned. This is pre-birth planning. Akashic record is just a non-physical world record. There are people who can access this. And this is why it is important to understand the concept. Then whether to believe it or not, whether you want to know your Akashic record or not, that's a separate thing, but that's the point. Now the question is, how can you know about it? There are people who can talk to the, the spirits. You know, they're called mediums, channels. Uh, there are masters uh, world over, every country, not just in US, here, North America, or India, or anywhere. And they will have those powers to talk to the spirit, and you know, you can have a session. There is a technique called past life regression. You can do that, and you can, you know, learn a lot of things about you, about your prior life, it may not be immediately prior, it could be a couple of life prior, but that will indicate that what is it that you are trying to overcome as an emotion, as a hurt, as a healing. So you will know the connection between this life and that, okay, previous something you have gone through and what you are trying to overcome. Now, does it mean everyone should know this? Well, no. If that was the case, then universe would have made us like, okay, you take rebirth and you know everything from past life. There must be a reason why we don't know. But is there a way to know? Yes, there is a way to know. That's the thing. And these terms will be used in our discussion uh, over and over. So now let's talk about soul plan. Soul plan, there is, we may say, you know, low, high, good, bad, positive, negative, but this is human terms. This is not soul terms. For soul, they are much about this. There's no emotion, nothing. For emotion only, they we incarnate in human form because emotion only come when you're in human form. We are all bundle of energy. We talked about that in our uh, quantum physics sessions. So it's just the physical body which we kind of create in this form and leave behind in this form. We take rebirth, different physical body, different characteristic, different shape, size, and everything. So what's happening is in meditation, remember we keep saying we are diluting, we are dissolving our ego going away as much as from our body and the mind. Why? Because ego is the one which is a big kind of a wall, roadblock. The more you dissolve your ego and body, now more you come close to your soul. Your plan, the soul plan is to eradicate, to remove, eliminate, overcome your fears. Remember we were talking about all those negative emotions about yourself, your biasness, your judgmental, your egos, and all those kind of things you want to go away from. Because you have those fears, those low-level energies in you. Because when you have experiences in this life, experience is gone, but the energy of that experience stays with the soul. So if you are hurt, for example, big time, somebody 
kind of did something to you. That energy may stay with you and may come back in your next reincarnation. You want to overcome that. And that is why we have certain experience to overcome the negative or energy or the gaps that we have. And you are moving towards unconditional love. You're moving towards compassion, oneness. This is one very big factor in the soul plan. Wherever the lack is, you want to go for unconditional. You know, there's abundance of everything, abundance of love, compassion, which is a true human feeling. We are crossing the bridge from fearless, from fear to fearless. So you want to become fearless. You want to become where you are wide open, feeling of oneness. You can accept everyone. No judgment. That's what makes you light. You become divine. So what you're doing, you're accepting your flaws totally freely with no you know, conditions. You will just embrace all of your flaws. And you will say, yes, I accept who I am, the way I am. First condition, because now you're surrendering. No more ego, no more fighting. That no, 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 how can I have this issue or I, how can I have this shortcoming? No, we have for a reason. This is part of the soul planning, part of the soul evolution. You want to evolve to a higher level soul. So you have to learn. So it's like a movie. You decided the script. Movie is going like a script. You have to just accept and watch it. And that is the big thing about it. That can we accept? Can we move on or not? If we don't do this, you get stuck either in a circle, you will spin your wheels, or you will not accept means your ego is coming in the way. Such a hard resistance that you will not learn. Then you have to take rebirth. So let's also look at free will before we come to the next topic, which we will take next week. Free will, what does it mean? So if soul plan is something before birth, pre-birth planning, you decided that my life, next life, I will learn this, this, this. How I will learn? Oh, this person will teach me this. I will teach this person this. So you picked your parents, your kids, your neighbors, everything you picked as a planning. And that's how it's not by accident you meet someone or whichever way you get married to someone or you pick your parent. Everything is that, okay, in this setting, I will learn this from this person and I will teach this to other person. Sharing. Does it has to happen exactly like this? No, and that's what free will is. What it is, is it's a plan, but the plan is having certain yes and no condition. So it's like a process flow. If this happens, great. If not, this is plan B, this is plan C. So you have flexibility and certain things will come straight away as planned. Certain things will be minor deviation. You know, just like you go, you're driving with a GPS, you miss a turn, it will say, okay, another hundred meters, make a U-turn or, you know, take exit and then do this and that. Similarly, we have free will. It's not like this or nothing. So what it will come is it will help you to overcome whatever emotions that you are trying to overcome. It is not trying to hurt you. It is not trying to, you know, have you any more trauma kind of thing than you already have. So it is not necessary. Like we talked about suffering. You acknowledge in first attempt that, yes, this is what the message I'm getting from the universe. I have to fix. Great. You will fix. You will move on. But if you say no, ego, nothing wrong with me you do not accept, then your option A is gone, you will go for option B, means there will be more suffering and you will fix later on. If you don't still accept, it may be option C. So that is free will. It could be on a positive side, you know, rather than three attempts, you attempt, learn in very first one. You don't need to go further, you go right from there. So it is all trying to make you better. It is not trying to hurt you. It is making you overcoming your emotions, keep moving forward, forward, forward. That is the soul plan, that how it can help you. Now, when we do this, 
we will achieve the next level, the next level, and the next level. That means, as per the soul plan, you are moving forward. Whether in physical form you understand your soul plan or not, we will come to that later on. Because first thing comes to your mind, what is my soul plan? How do I know? And all those things we will cover in different topics as we move forward. So next week, we will talk about challenges because it itself is a big thing. I don't want to bombard too much at the same time. So we'll go step by step. So I'll stop sharing here. I do want to give you certain time if you have a question to ask. It's already an hour. So I will stop recording here. And if you have any question, please feel free to ask.